When we talk about bonds, the concept of yield um, also applies very much. Because when we talk about bonds, we're talking about interest paying securities effectively. We're talking about debt, and unlike stock, we're not talking about ownership. We're talking about debt, and debt typically pays an interest rate. So in the case of bonds, the concept of yield is very important, and there are different yields that are used. The first yield is the coupon yield, which if a bond is issued at $1,000, so for example, the company sells a bond of $1,000 to an investor, the investor buys for $1,000. If that company uh, is committed and is expected to pay coupons of $50 a year, then that, the coupon yield will be 50 divided by 1,000 or 5%. And that is um, obviously money that we may have to pay taxes on depending on our tax situation. But that is the coupon yield of that bond. And it gives us an indication of the interest rate that we receive based on the face value of the bond. And if we bought it at $1,000 and received $50 of coupons a year, then we would effectively be receiving an interest rate of 5%. The second, concept, the second yield that is often used for bonds is the current yield, because that bond that could have been, was issued at $1,000 might be trading at a slightly different price. So if that um, bond was now trading at $900 and was still paying coupons of $50 on an annual basis, then the, effective, uh, then the current yield of that bond would be 50 divided by 900, which would, which would be slightly higher than 5%. So basically our current yield, or our effective yield as an investor, buying a bond at 9%, if we're receiving $50 of, coup of a coupon on an annual basis, we would be receiving a current yield of 50 divided by 900, expressed as a percentage. Another concept uh, of yield that is applied in the case of bonds is the yield to maturity. And that is the yield that we would receive if we bought the security at say 900 and we held it to maturity which would be at a thousand in the previous example when they repay the full amount or expected to repay the full amount of the bond and we would receive also the fifty dollar coupon so in that case we could calculate a yield based on the receipt of those fifty dollars annually um, and in addition integrate into that calculation the yield that we would receive from the appreciation from nine hundred to one thousand um, and that is the yield to maturity of a bond. In this case, again, it would be over 5% because we're receiving 50, we're already receiving $50 on 900 um, effectively while we hold it. And then ultimately the bond is expected to be repaid at face value. Um, and these are all, of course, expected yields because um, nothing is for certain um, in the world of investing to a large extent. Um, and most bonds have risks and are considered Risk, risk securities, is a, um, except for in the case of government bonds, which are often considered to be risk-free. But the concept of yield to maturity is the yield that we would receive if we held that security to maturity. The last one, which is less frequently used, applies to, in, to municipal bonds in the U.S., which is a tax equivalent yield, which is a yield that uh, normalizes that bond's coupon yield um, or current yield to a tax equivalent yield because of the fact that we don't have to pay bonds on municipal that we don't have to pay tax on municipal bonds and therefore we could calculate a tax equivalent yield which would take into account the fact that these bonds are tax free and therefore are providing a higher yield in effect because we're receiving the coupons tax free so again the concept of yield is the income return of an investment expresses a percentage um, and very important in the case of bonds because bonds are income, very much income bearing securities to a large extent, especially as if they are lower risk or even risk free. The income return is a major element of the return, whereas often in the case of stocks, the bulk of the return ideally comes from or often comes from capital appreciation and the dividend yield is something that we receive while we hold the stock. But uh, the capital appreciation very much plays a role in calculating the overall return of a stock. So that is the concept of yield as applied to bonds.